Hey, everybody. Welcome to American Idol on Air. I'm your host, Bennett Shear. Today, we have a top 26 edition of the show because you definitely saw Dawson Wayne on American Idol. Dawson, how's it going? Doing well. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. I've been really excited to meet you. I'm a fan and I really enjoy your performances. So tell me how this journey started and what was going on at the time where you reached out to? Did you try it yourself? I was definitely not scouted. No, um, I auditioned myself. I actually auditioned for season 20 um, last year and I did not get past the first like Zoom call. Um, and then I was serving a mission this year and on the mission, we only get our phones on Mondays. Um, and one Monday I woke up, I had my phone and I checked my email. The first thing, the first email that was there was, auditions today for American Idol. Um, so I hopped on the Zoom and they sent me straight through to the executives. Um, and so I did the whole process while I was like on this mission. And I went and auditioned for the judges, Katy Perry, Luke Bryan, and Lionel Richie, less than a month after I had gotten off my mission. Were you expecting things to go that far, especially if you had a prior experience? Or was it surprising to get through? I wasn't surprised only because well, so I, I went and served a mission and I just like had a very strong feeling um, while I was there. Like, if you serve this mission, like you're going to get on American Idol, which is weird. Obviously, it wasn't it wasn't why I was doing the mission. Um, but American Idol is something I've been like trying for and like striving for for a long time. Um, and so I just felt like I was ready at that point in time. Um, so I wasn't surprised to get that far, actually. I was surprised how quick the process was, though. Um, yeah, when they don't reach out to you, um, you just expect, OK, well, in a month, they'll let me know if I'm going to have another meeting with them. But the way it actually worked was I was on a Zoom call with the producer, and they sent me straight to the executives like that same day, that same hour. Um, and so that was shocking for me to see that it was actually that quick. What do you think they saw in you? What was you think your special kind of sauce if you will that you brought as an artist to american idol yeah i do feel like i was definitely very different from everyone else um i'm just a very soft spoken like emotional singer very like whispery tones kind of like billy eilish a little bit more um and i just think it's something they hadn't necessarily seen before um and from watching the show, I think the voice is a very, it's just a sing off basically. Um, and American Idol isn't like that. It's all about being marketable, being different, being an artist. And being an artist means being original and doing something most of the time different from other people. And so I just felt like I had a, a good chance in terms of American Idol because I knew I was different from everyone else. Let's back up a little bit to when you got into music and how you sort of fell into figuring out who you were as an artist. Mm -hmm. I've done music my entire life. That's just how we grew up with my parents. Um, but I think I started like choir in second grade um, and I did it all the way through junior high, high school. I started band in junior high, high school um, and I played percussion. I was huge into that. Um, but and I was always a good singer. I mean, I was just kind of born with it, but I never had like a unique sound, a unique style until maybe a little over two years ago is when I started developing it. Um, I had gone through some really, really tough things. I've always really struggled to find good friends. Um, and so there was a point in time where I really thought I had them and they ended up being very kind of toxic and um, really just affected me in a very negative way. Um, and they would not like give me closure to that. Um, they wouldn't admit what was happening. They wouldn't even like talk about it. So I found like my voice through like writing about that, um, and giving that closure to myself. Um, and at that time I was like huge on Billie Eilish and Olivia Rodrigo. And so those two have really, really helped like morph, help me morph into my sound. Um, but it was really like trying to find that closure for myself where I really just found out like what Dawson's style is. We didn't get to see your first audition. So I'm curious if you want to tell us what that was like. And even before what we didn't see on TV with the judges, what it was like arriving in your city where you went, 
maybe some of the people you met, contestants? I auditioned in Nashville. It was the last audition city. And there I got super close with Sarah Snyder um, and Dakara, um, who was never really shown. Sarah wasn't either. Um, but we got super close there. Um, they were both there with their moms and we were just having a blast together. Um, for my audition, I sang Say You Love Me by Jesse Ware. Um, I was the very last audition day, so the judges were exhausted. I am very much like this, like I'm not super excitable, so it's not like I'm bringing the energy into the room or anything. Um, but they thought it was good. Uh, I got three yeses from them. I think Katy Perry was singing along at the chorus at some point. I didn't actually hear her, but I saw her lips moving. And they gave me great feedback. They told me my vibrato was a little too wide and I needed to speed it up a little bit. Um, but everything else, they were like, you are a storyteller. Um, stay in your lane, don't compete with anyone else. And song choice is gonna be a huge thing. It's gonna be how you make it in this competition. Um, they just said I sang from a very spiritual place. Yeah, they had a lot of good things to say. So how did you feel just walking into a TV show? I mean, did you ever done anything like this or competitions? Was it another world for you? It was a completely different world. I had never done anything like that before. I didn't have time to psych myself out though. Um, for the auditions, we're all up on like the 16th floor of whatever building and the audition actually happens on probably the 11th. So they bring us down a couple people at a time. I was with Brooklyn from Brooklyn um whose audition showed a little bit um they brought us down together and but they grabbed her first so i assumed she was singing first um and so i went off to a corner and like was warming up and i heard people like yelling my name dawson dawson i was like oh i'm over here and they brought me up and lined me up behind brooklyn um and they're like all right dawson walk through the doors they're ready and i was like oh shoot i still just assumed brooklyn was before me so i didn't have time to psych myself out which was a very big like advantage for me I walked on and I'm not like a starstruck type of person. So I wasn't just going to like freeze in front of the judges either way, but I'm a very shaky performer and that helped me a lot. Just kind of ease my mind for sure. Was it eye opening to realize how many people compete in this show and try out for American Idol? It was, it, yeah, it was super cool. I mean, I think, Something that's really weird is obviously every year they say, oh, this is the best class ever or whatever. They say it every single year. So interesting to see the behind the scenes. There's like 150 people make it to Hollywood week. 20, 30 of them get shown. Like you have no idea the talent that's there if you're not on the show. Just unbelievable people who did not make the top 20. Like Oprah, she, she sang her first song and performance challenge and we all looked to each other and we're like top 24 and they cut her right then and there and we were flabbergasted and there were so many other people that were just insane that you don't know about um because they just don't have the time to show them and they didn't make the top 26. it's wild i mean here on american idol on air we're fortunate to get to meet a lot of the contestants ofra included who either they were aired briefly or they didn't air at all and Another thing that we don't get to see is all of the interviewing and, and B-roll footage that they get and even things that they do show, it's very condensed. You're probably in those interview rooms longer than you are with the judges or on stage. Any stories you want to share about just all the filming that they did with that? They never, honestly, I never felt like they filmed me unless they had to. Okay. Um, so in Nashville for my audition, they never like really filmed me until after I got the golden ticket. Um, they didn't do like any pre-interviews or stuff like that. Hollywood week I felt was pretty similar until like showstoppers. Um, but I'm always just like this. And so I'm not people, the cameras are like trying to gravitate towards, but multiple times, like on my audition, I walked out of the room and I said, look what I found with my golden ticket. And Ryan Seacrest was like, you're very Zen. And I'm like, this is my excited face. And my mom's just like screaming, jumping up and down. She's like, it is, that is his excited face. Um, and obviously for each of the rounds you make it through for performance challenge, especially, um, they send you out a door and they're like, okay, act excited. You just got through to another round. And so they're like, bust through the door. There's a camera right there, act excited. And I'm just not like that at all. So I like open the door and I look at the camera, I'm like excited face. Um, and they were, 
too stunned to speak. Like the people behind the cameras, they like did not know what to do with that. I'm like, this is all I have for you. I am acting my heart out right now. <laughs> this is the best I can give you. Um, so they thought I was pretty funny um, and they liked it, but yeah, none of it ended up getting shown or anything. But I honestly love it, Dawson, because I think people relate to it. Like it's, it's, it's difficult. It is kind of like acting, not kind of, it is acting in most cases and you're being yourself. Yeah. I thought it would be funny if they made like a whole shtick out of it. Like my life is literally changing before my eyes and I'm just like excited face or stuff like that. I thought it would have been funny if they did something like that. Oh, but that's true. Yeah. They could have made like a funny meme or something. Whatever. For sure. Yeah, no, there was a contestant last year. His name was Aaron Westbury and he kind of, they, they did that kind of story with him and I interviewed him and it was interesting to sort of hear his perspectives because not everybody has the demeanor. It's, you know, just because somebody doesn't express the way that they're feeling about something with woohoo doesn't mean they're not just as excited or who knows, maybe you aren't actually excited. And if you're not, that's okay too. Yeah, no, I was so happy, but I mean, I just posted on my Instagram about this, but I just don't show excited emotions anymore. It's just like, it's been a long time since I've like felt stuff like that and even feeling it now it's just difficult for me to express it's really weird and foreign to me um so i just don't i'm just very like cool and collected and like just i don't know i just exist i, I like to just observe things i'm not like trying to make myself the center of attention ever i watched that video you posted and i really liked it because i just i i like the way that you're just very candid about things and whether it's what you've been through or how you're feeling now i mean i don't know if you want to talk any more about it but i just i find it really refreshing that you're so comfortable speaking about your feelings i think it's very important to be the vulnerable person because i think it's what a lot of people are looking for um and i think you'll find that you will be the person people relate the most to when you're not afraid to share what you've gone through. And at the end of the day, like trials are a part of life. Like everyone's going through them. Like, I don't understand why we would try to pretend like we're going through something that no one else would care about, that no one else would empathize with. Um, but I think in a lot of ways in my life, I try to be the example and try to be the light in other people's lives. Um, and I think sometimes just being honest about what you struggle with and what's difficult for you is something that people need. Um, and so I enjoy doing things that like that, that I feel like other people need. You know, even when you shared the story a few minutes ago about the friendships that turn toxic, that's something so many people can relate to, but they sometimes feel alone or they feel silent or they feel like, am I crazy? Am I the only person going through this? So to have somebody else say that, even just in an interview or on a TV show, especially on a platform, you know, they're like, oh, you know, there, here's this person that I look up to. They've gone through the same thing, you know, and you're there for those people. Yeah, exactly. That was actually, I think, going to be like my main story for the show. I was obviously like I told you, I had these toxic friendships or whatever. It's been very difficult for me. But I was I met a friend on my mission who I got super close with and he was going to come accompany me for my audition. And so it was going to be like this full circle moment or whatever. I'm like, I haven't been able to find friends, but now I'm going to sing an original song accompanied by like my best friend on national television or whatever. But he tested. He got a false positive for COVID oh. and he couldn't come. So they just wiped it completely and they didn't. Yeah, they just wiped that storyline completely. So mm -hmm. I talked about it a little bit in my showstoppers, and I think they barely hinted to it in some of the overlapping commentary, but yeah, they never ended up going into that at all. Tell me a little more about Sour Skies Performance Challenge. That's when we met you, so I want to hear more about the song that we luckily did get to hear in that round. Yeah, they actually like cut that like into thirds and showed like one third of it. So the storyline was everywhere. So it's about, my album is called Abuser that I'm working on. Um, and it's about, that song specifically is about how those people can ruin your favorite things for you. Mm. Um, my mom has always called me like Eeyore or whatever. Like I've always just been this whatever person. And one thing I love above everything else is like, I love dark clouds and I love like rain and stuff like that. 
I just love days like that. And so it's just comparing, like the sun is always the good guy in movies and the rain is always the bad thing that everything's going wrong when it's raining. But in this one, it's like, the rain is my safe space and you've come in like the sun and you've completely gotten rid of that safe space. That's what it's about is just ruining the best parts of my life for me. Um, and it's difficult for me to love the same things the way I did. And so that's a song I'm trying to put out maybe end of May. But yeah, that's what it's that's what it's about. You said that you really got seriously about music only a couple years before the show. Have you had any um, creative things going on before then, whether it's writing, poetry, journaling, anything? Because you just have such a, a great mind when it comes to thinking of, of of stories and concepts. I'm curious if you've been in a in a writing mind even before you got into music um obviously music's always been in my life and i think growing up watching the voice of american idol america's got talent with all these really cool like renditions of songs like i've really always looked at songs that way and just really like taken whenever i listen to songs some of them just really speak to me and i can just really envision it in this really really cool way and i've always just wanted the chance to show that take on a song so i feel like yes i've always been like that a little bit in terms of like actually just being creative with stuff i don't think i really have i've never been able to songwrite until two years ago um it just like clicked on one day i had tried before and it just never worked yeah i've always said uh, i thought i as a kid i was like very creative with different stuff like arts and crafts and just whatever but in terms of this, I think it really all just did stem like start two years ago for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just I can imagine you like always writing stories or like in English when they have to ask you to write things like you would always come up with the most interesting. I'm sure I did not. <laughs> I and that may have been like a motivation thing. Like I never cared for school because I always just knew I wanted to do music. So I'd always do the least to get the most so as long as i had like a b i was good and i was taking like all on level classes so i'm sure creative creativity wise i was never soaring in my classes i was literally always when i was in school i was had my heart set on being like a band or a choir director so i was literally like i don't need these classes i yeah. needed to pass i needed to do like okay in them so my parents wouldn't take me out of band and choir. Um, so I took all on level classes. So I like literally never had homework. I was like, I'm going to be a band director. So I don't need that stuff. Um, but I really want money. So maybe I'll go to that after I'm rich and famous. Love it. Um, uh, I want to I want to ask about duets because we didn't see that. Right. Is Sarah Mac? Sarah part? Mac. Yeah, that was by far the most interesting part of the process for me going into Hollywood week, I said, all I want is to make duets. Like, that's what I want to do. Mm. Just from watching the show. And like, I want to work with someone else and stuff like that. The time came and they're like, all right, choose a partner. I last year, they chose them for people. Um, and that's what I was expecting. And I was really excited for that. Like I wanted to see who they thought I'd be good with, but they said, choose a partner. And, it took a bit, but everyone partnered up and me and Sarah Mack were legitimately the last two people. Wow. So we had to partner up. We did not know each other. We didn't hear each other sing in the first round somehow. Um, you're sitting there in the audience for everyone, but I mean, you can go out and take the bathroom, go to the bathroom or whatever. So I think I was in the bathroom for hers and she was in the bathroom for mine. So we didn't know each other. We hadn't heard each other sing. We don't know if we're comparable at all. But we had to partner up because we were the last two people i guess aiden technically was the last but yeah and so then they showed us the songs and we knew none of the same songs but i'd say there was like 20 24 songs we got to choose from and we ended up doing talking to the moon by bruno mars because it's the only one that she knew that i had at least heard of and we did a really cool rendition of it we i it was definitely just like my breakout performance or whatever where i just like forgot i was on the stage i forgot there was people there and i was performing um and it was just sarah gave me the confidence to do it and we i'd say we worked really well together like i really had a plan for it i like really came up with a rendition and like choreography too and stuff like that not choreography but like staging and blocking um and 
she was just very vocal, like, okay, I like this, I don't like this. And we just worked well together because I had a plan and she had an opinion and a voice. And yeah, we worked really well together. I didn't have a voice that day. That was the first time adrenaline had ever just hit me because we just did like a really big buildup at one point. And I was like, oh, this is friggin' sick. People were clapping and like my voice just came and it was bigger than it had ever been. And it was, it was like seriously a magical moment for me. The judges liked it, question mark. Everyone, everyone stood up for it. I don't, I think Lionel Richie was the only judge to stand up for it. Um, they spent most of the time talking to Sarah. They talked to me first. They said, Dawson, don't do that again. Don't compete with the big voices. Stay in your lane. And I was like, okay, whatever. Because it was just a big song. That's just the way it had to be because Sarah was a big singer. So I was convinced I was going home because I, they just didn't seem very excited about me. But yeah, they said, don't do that again. And you're going through. So we had a, we had a fun time for duet round. Well, you surpassed your goal of making it to duets. You make it to Showstopper and you make it to America's Vote. How did that feel? It felt super cool. I like honestly don't know how to describe it. I Duet was the only round where I felt like I wasn't going to the next round. After Showstoppers, I had a very good feeling that I was going to lives only because I was different from everyone else and I was really good at what I was doing. And the judges really seemed to like me. And my performance was incredible. It was a really nice. good feeling because I, I had never performed like that before and it was really good. But it was such a good feeling to just want it for so long and to finally have it. Wow. I remember Hawaii, your performance of Copycat was my favorite of the night. I was so really? excited. It, like it just it just woke me up. I was like uh, between your stage presence and your interpretation. It just, it, it was really exciting. How did you feel about it? I was not crazy about that song choice. I had given them probably like six, five or six songs before then that were just really more my style, but they were like, it's just an outdoor performance. Like we want something more upbeat or whatever. And someday I just randomly had like this entire version of copycat come into my head, like this really lyrical ballad. And so I was like, okay, I want to do copycat then. And I want to do it like this. And so once we started working with the vocal coaches, they like realized how different I had made it. And they're like, oh, like you really cannot do that. Like you've completely changed everything about the song, like even the melody and everything. Um, and it's just like borderline disrespectful. Like we can't do that, but we're gonna keep the song. And so I felt trapped in it a little bit. And so I was worried about that, but at the same time, it was a really fun, rendition or whatever and so i thought it would have been cool and different but i was super worried about the judges because i knew they had told me every round stay in your lane don't compete with the bigger singers my voice was gone for that performance like i just have a very delicate voice i can't sing big for too long so the vocal coach all the vocal coaching we had to do wrecked me and i just did not have a voice um and so i was not happy with my performance at all I thought it was really cool. Vocally, it was, I'd give it like a five or a six compared to what I could have done. But I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it was. Can't get mad about it. And no one else really seems to care. So no harm, no foul. Yeah. And you worked with Noah Cyrus, right? I did. Yeah. How was that? That was fun. She is such a freaking vibe. She's super cool. She had really long nails that had a ton of little seashells on them. It was so cool. But yeah, she was great. Super nice. We had uh, we had a fun time talking for sure. And you're in LA for like three weeks before you even tape that show. What are you doing exactly for three weeks? I've always been curious what they have you there for. Is it rehearsals, getting acquainted with the stage? Yeah, I guess just getting ready, like filming so much stuff, B-roll, interviews stage rehearsals vocal coaching like there's just so much that goes on before it that we're just there for hours and hours a day um and we just they bring us to the studio and put us in little like dressing rooms for the day and so we're just there if they need us basically mm -hmm. um so i mean we'd be there for 10 hours and maybe they would need us for like an hour of it if we're not doing anything the rest of the day they're pretty good about sending us home but yeah there's just a couple things that we do that take a while. It's been a week and a day 
as we're recording this. How are you feeling now? How are you feeling in the moment? Let's talk a little bit about sort of the feelings of getting sent home. In the moment, I actually felt very good. Um, when we walked onto the platform and sat on the big white cushion chairs or whatever, I just knew I was going. I was like, I just knew. And I felt very at peace with it. It was just like revelation, honestly. Like God was talking to me. I felt like I had been praying, reading my scriptures, um, doing all this stuff to just get myself in the mindset. Cause I, I really try to do that with my performances. Like the, uh, try to spread that light any way I can of just whatever. And so I like to get myself in that mindset. And so I felt I left myself very open to guidance like that. And so we walked out and I was like, okay, I'm gone. And by the time Megan Danielle sang, I was like, oh, like we know I'm gone. Like it's official. Cause Megan went, there was two spots left and Colin and Way were still there. Like heaven knows they're not going anywhere. And I felt good and at peace with it. And I felt like I, I did what I needed to do there. Um, and I was the instrument that God needed me to be. And so we left and everyone uh, that I ran into on just uh, hair and makeup and whatever and wardrobe, they all said bye and stuff like that. But they shipped us straight out and we did not get to say bye to the rest of the contestants. And that wrecked me. I, that was the best part of the show for me. Like the closest friends I've ever made and I did not get to say goodbye and they were all still there together without me. And so I got to the wow. other hotel for that night because they were flying us out the next day. And I called them and I was just crying, which I never do. Uh, so I think it took me like a couple days to just feel okay. I think my body was a lot more depressed than like I was. Like I could just, my body had no energy. I was, it was super weird, but that's the best way I can describe it. But I have always felt like, content with it um and at peace with the fact that i was sent home that soon i talked to most contestants who filmed the show months ago and i say what have you been up to but it's been a couple of days so to ask what you've been up to i guess you came uh -huh. home you got settled and i maybe the better question would be what are you planning to get up to now that idols in the rearview mirror yeah i'm just gonna try to look for ways to just try to find out where god wants me i'm gonna try to find ways that i can make money with music um i'm headed to nashville in a couple weeks to finish and put out a couple songs um i do have a couple songs out already um but i'm gonna go and do some more of that um try to get some gigs i'm gonna try to get some like merch out more like clothing brand type stuff though than just like dos and stuff because that's not really my vibe um, but yeah, just trying to like take advantage of this while I can. Do you have any advice for singers thinking of the show or just musicians in general? I would say for people looking to be on the show, know who you are as an artist and be very good in that lane you choose to go in. Um, they are not looking for singers by any means they're looking for someone with something unique to offer that's why everyone that makes a top 26 is so different if it was a singing show oprah would have made it over me there's i i would never have made top 26 if it was a singing show not in a million years it's just looking for people that are different that have something unique to offer that have something special something new and if you are going to be a singer you have to be the best singer on the planet so yeah just know who you are and be comfortable being you on the show where can we follow you to stay tuned with everything coming up for you dawson on instagram at it's dawson wayne i don't i think my handle for everything is at it's dawson wayne but yeah i feel like i've been good at doing updates i'm terrible with social media but since i've gotten off the show i've tried to be good about it um but that's where you can find me Cool. Well, guys, if you enjoyed this conversation, make sure that you follow us, Instagram, TikTok, Idol and Aired Podcast. Please subscribe wherever you're listening or watching if you have not already. Dawson, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being a part of American Idol on Aired. My pleasure. Happy to be here.